Hello, and you are very welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve. And in today's episode, we take a look at saving time grading our footage using post group clip nodes. If you find this content helpful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the notification bell. As always, to save you time, here are some time codes. Feel free to jump ahead if you'd prefer. To show what post group clip nodes do, we will use an example. Of course, there are many other applications for post group clip nodes, but once you understand what it is that they do, you can apply them to your needs. So let's imagine this common shooting scenario and take advantage of this feature. You're delivering a pretty standard video, i.e. some interview clips on your A cam, cut together with some B-roll clips shot on your B cam. In my case, the interview A cam is an FS5 and was shot with our own light. On this camera, we choose to shoot S Gambit 3 Cine and S Log 3 because at 1080p, the FS5 is 10 bit 42 and can handle the S Log 3 gamma. The B cam is an A6300 and was shot with only available light. Being only 8-bit 420, we decide to shoot with a gamma of S log 2. The point of this is that we essentially have two sets of footage. Footage from the A cam that renders light and color in one way in one lighting environment, and a B cam that renders light and color in another way in another lighting environment. With the scenario laid out, let's jump into Resolve and grade this sequence quickly, easily, and efficiently by utilizing post group clip nodes. We will begin with a quick look at the edit so you can see how this mock sequence looks before we color it. An electric drum kit is pretty much exactly like a real drum kit. There's a snare drum, there's some toms, and there's some cymbals. And just like a real drum kit, they're a hell of a lot of fun to play. Obviously nothing special, but it's enough to get the point across. Dull sound bites overlaid with extremely on-the-nose, unimaginative B-roll. The B-roll was purposely shot inconsistently to show you the power of group post clip nodes, which we will get to. Now to the colour tab. The first step is to group our clips. Make sure you have the clips panel open by clicking on the clips icon. Right click on a clip and you will get a whole bunch of options including add into group and add into new group. I recommend using add into new group as this will give you the option to name the group and allow you to be extra organized. Remember, this is just a simple example, but as you get into more complex sequences, organization becomes more vital. I will call this FS5. With an FS5 group created, I can now select the remaining FS5 clips, right click and add into group and select FS5. Next, we will set up a second group for the A6300 footage. Select all the A6300 clips, right click and select add into new group and name it A6300. Lastly, if you accidentally add a clip to the wrong group, you can right click that clip and remove from group and then proceed to add it to the correct group. Let's come up to our node panel. Now that we have created groups, we have some extra options on top of our usual clip and timeline. The third option is group post clip nodes. Because on our timeline we are on a clip that is in the FS5 group, we are now looking at nodes that will affect all clips in that group. Let's convert this footage to Rec709 with the Color Space Transform tool. It'll be sgamu3.cine and slog3 for inputs and Rec709 for both outputs. Same as timeline would have been fine for me as I happen to have my timeline set to my desired output, but in the interest of being as clear as possible, let's be thorough. We'll set luminance mapping to simple and make a few quick adjustments to get this looking reasonable without being too fussy.
If I disable the B-roll track and jump around our FS5 footage on the timeline, you can see that all clips in the FS5 group receive this adjustment. That's one powerful aspect of grouping clips, but not specifically group post clip nodes. To really show what this is capable of, let's jump to the A6300 footage. I purposely did a mix of exposure, i.e. one to the middle, one to the right, and one to the left. Of course, on the A6300 when shooting log, you really should shoot to the right to get a clean image, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's ignore how noisy some of the footage is. While viewing this clip, which is exposed to the middle, let's add our color space transform and appropriate settings. Input is sgamma3.cine, but now with slog2 for gamma, and output is rec 709, and again, we will save time by setting luminous mapping to simple. And with a few quick adjustments, we can get a reasonable looking image. Everything looks fine and dandy with this clip, but if we view our clip which we expose to the right, which is also receiving those adjustments, the shot is overall too hot. If I add a note before and adjust the group to suit this shot, then our previous clip is too dark. So let's remove that note. Instead, we will make that adjustment to the clip itself. You see, because of the image processing pipeline of Resolve, adjustments we make to individual clips take place before adjustments we make to group post clips. This means we can make changes on a clip by clip basis to balance the footage to suit the overall adjustment we want for a given group. So in this extremely simplified example, we use the post group clip to do the heavy lifting of getting log clips into a Rec 709 space. And now we will adjust the individual clips to look correct within the overall adjustment. We will bring down the exposure and now it fits nicely into our group adjustment. If we come to this clip that we exposed to the left, I also set the white balance incorrectly. Firstly, let's lift the exposure. And now let's correct the white balance by warming the image up. And now let's look at the sequence. An electric drum kit is pretty much exactly like a real drum kit. There's a snare drum, there's some toms, and there's some cymbals. And just like a real drum kit, they're a hell of a lot of fun to play. Of course, there's a bit more tweaking that could be done. And of course, some of that footage was outright shot incorrectly and doesn't look great. But you can imagine how in a more complex sequence that this technique could be extremely beneficial. I use group post clip nodes all the time in my corporate work as they are a great way of speeding up the grading process. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered in this tutorial? Leave a comment below so I know to cover it in a future episode. My name is Lee Dalton. This is DaVinci Resolve A to Z. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.